Welcome back everyone. Now that we know how to create a new Next.js project and what the folder structure looks like, it is time to dive into the different features that Next.js offers. And we're going to start with routing. In this video, I want to give you a brief introduction to the routing feature and over the next few videos, we will understand how routing works with examples. Let's begin by understanding how we would typically set up routing in a React application. We would begin by installing a third party package like React Router. We would then create a routes.js file where we configure the routes for our application. For every route, we would create a component file, export the component, import it in routes.js, and configure the new route with a path property. Now these steps were enough of a pattern to motivate the Next.js team to implement their own routing feature. After all, routing is needed for a vast majority of production applications. But as opposed to configuring the routing feature by writing some code, Next.js decided to adopt a file system based routing mechanism. If you can recollect, I mentioned that Next.js is a framework which comes with conventions that have to be followed. And that is indeed applicable to this routing feature as well. Now, what is that convention? Well, the convention or the guideline is that when a file is added to the pages folder in the project, it automatically becomes available as a route. And by mixing and matching file names with nested folder structure, it is possible to pretty much define the common routing patterns. Over the next few videos, let's see how to route with pages, how to define nested and dynamic routes, how to define a catch-all route, navigate from the UI, and also programmatically navigate between pages. I'll see you in next video.